Nicholas? Did something just happen? Nicholas almost knocked me over coming out the door. Most likely he's gone out for another ride. Are you sure that's wise? My opinion wasn't solicited. It's dark and he's upset. Steph, I'll go after him before something terrible happens. Nicholas is an excellent rider, and his horse knows the island well. But he likes to ride on the cliff. One misstep, and he could fall. Well, the moon is extremely bright tonight. Or haven't you noticed? I was watching it through the front window. It looked like a giant pearl. You know, Nicholas is a fortunate young man. Not only has he survived a horrible accident, but he has you to help oversee his recovery. He just looks so forlorn. I want to help him. You can. Try not to smother him. Nicholas is responsible, competent, and fiercely independent. And you're not the least bit worried. Of course I'm worried. But he has to work through this by himself. If riding gives him pleasure, I can't ask him not to do that. Now, I am hoping to see you later this evening. I'll be home all night. Just follow the underground tunnel. <laughs> we have been separated by years by Stefan's ambition. No, Mother. By my common sense. Lurking in the bushes. How like you. You chose this spot, Mother. I'm simply here to hasten your departure. Go back to the house, Nicholas. I don't intend to eat with her, so I'm not in any danger. Estimate your advantage. Now, Nicholas is no longer a child. You can't warn him away from me and expect him to do your bidding. Though I must say that his reluctance and refusal to speak this evening demonstrates a lack of character on his part. Your spies are slipping. What do you mean? Is there something about his injury that I haven't been told? He had a stroke. Oh, my God. Nicholas has expressive dysphagia. He can speak, but he prefers not to because sometimes his sentences are jumbled. No, has he seen a specialist? I mean, have you taken him to a speech therapist? He refuses, no doubt, another demonstration of his lack of character. Oh, always the strategist. How efficient to use my grandson's handicap against me, particularly when his suffering is because of your neglect. Oh, you brought him to this godforsaken city. And then you left him with Luke Spencer's tender mercies while you were occupied with, with your new glorious mistress, Catherine I, I think, an insipid blonde to dull the pain of your pathetic obsession with your brother's wife. It would almost be amusing if it hadn't jeopardized Nicholas's life. The perfect definition of the second son. <laughs> Living your life in your brother's shadow, happily Nicholas takes after his own father. You don't know who he resembles, nor do you care. Your single objective is to control the family through him. I love my grandson. He is all that remains of my husband and my eldest son. You don't count for anything. And your sister for even less. Oh, yes. It's true. Alexis is your sister. Mikos's bastard daughter, Natasha. I know. I wasn't surprised that you validated her story. You always had a soft spot for Alexis. How else could she have deceived you so completely? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I would love to have seen you. Convinced that your blonde trollop was actually a Cassidyne. 
Couldn't you see, even with Alexis's fabricated evidence, that this story wasn't true? Catherine Bell is as common as ditch water. But then again, one could say, so is Stavros's wife, Laura. In fact, your taste in women is remarkably consistent. So is your method of attack, Mother. Goad me, probe for weaknesses, and then exploit them. Well, there are none. And the revelation that you forced Laura out of Nicholas's life and ordered the death of his grandmother, Leslie Weber, upset him greatly. No one wants to kill you. But we would all rejoice to hear that you died. And does that we include Alexis? Oh, I'm sorry. Natasha. She's your problem now. And you don't care what I do with her? You know, her throat could be slit, the same as her mother. Your little protege, the little girl that you taught and protected, even financed her education, your unquestioning ally in all things. I wonder if it was wise to disown her just for hurting the feelings of that bovine tramp you call a mistress. Or did you exile Alexis because of your own pride? She did beat you at your own game, you know. The deceiver, deceived. As I recall, you made a vow to kill Kristen's daughter. And yet Alexis remains alive despite being aware of her true identity. What is it, Mother? Are you afraid I might defend her after all? Or do you have plans for her yourself? Making you believe that you were carrying on an incestuous relationship, that's enough to, to earn anyone an extra six months of life. Careful she doesn't turn that ingenuity against you. I doubt you endeared yourself to Alexis by cutting her mother's throat and forcing her to grow up ignorant of her true parentage. Are you warning me against Alexis? She has persistent and annoying friends. Oh, but I forgot. You enjoy Luke Spencer's company. You know, I doubt Father and Sabros would approve of you flirting with their murderer. But I have no objection. You two are suited to one another. Is Luke still alive because killing him would drive Laura away forever? He's alive because there's a chance he just might kill you for me. Now you stay away from Nicholas and Catherine. If any harm should come to either one of them, I will not wait for Spencer to end your life. I'm not the least bit interested in your mistress. But Nicholas is the heir. And you won't keep me from him. I already have. Good night, Mother. Oh. Don't try to shoot me in the back. There's a gunman on the parapet with a rifle trained at your heart. I suppose I should say chest. They removed your heart, didn't they? Ha, 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 ha.